There's a new Burt Kreischer video that's dropped. Why Burt Kreischer won't accept reality. Let's watch this a bit. Burt Kreischer won't accept reality. Another video by a big YouTuber. Who's this one? His name is called Patrick CC. It's got he's got 1.6 million subscribers. Fucking hell, bro. Burt Kreischer's crossing over. Okay, let's see what I go on with this documentary. Bish bish bash. Let's do this. Boom. The second as it loads. Are you gonna load for me quickly? Come on, you're gonna go full screen properly or not? There you go. Boom. Let's play this. Let's see what he's saying. Burt Kreischer won't accept reality. Why won't he accept reality? Let's hear it. Burt Kreischer is one of the biggest comedians alive today, but all the reasons why he is successful is what will likely drive him to an early grave. Burt's comedic persona is the overweight drunken jester with way too much confidence. Well, it's not much of a persona. That's who he really is. Burt's success has been highly scrutinized over the years. Many people say he lacks comedic talent, is a full-blown narcissist, and would be nothing if he wasn't friends with Joe Rogan. Others point out that he is a genuine, sweet family man who uplifts everyone around him. But both his haters and fans agree that Burt's current lifestyle is unsustainable, and he is in total denial of the obvious warning signs. I say it to my friends. I mean it to my friends. I say it to my wife. I mean it to my wife. I think it's kind of cool because Bert complains a lot about his daughters not liking fame and stuff and how they get embarrassed every time he like acts super famous. I think it's kind of cool how well adjusted his kids have turned out, right? How like opposed they are to fame. How like they want to try, they want to, they, they, like I think he complains that they want to live they want to grow up quite normally, right? They want to have normal things. They're kind of ashamed by the trappings of his success, right? And the privilege it brings them. That's kind of comforting, isn't it? It's kind of cool. Isn't it? Like, yeah, they got a dad that's a super fame whore. And then the kids turned out to be like, look, we just want to have like a, we just want to be like our friends. <laughs> and Bert wants to like lord his fucking fame, you know, everywhere. It's kind of cool. Yeah, but maybe it is Leanne. Maybe Leanne's the reason why these kids are growing that way. But it's quite cool that he can... The things he complains about his kids, when I hear it, I'm like, that's kind of a cool thing. Like, why isn't that... A, and I also love the fact that one daughter looks like Leanne and one looks like Bert. It's kind of... That's kind of wild, isn't it? Like, sisters. Like, it's kind of shit. I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of wild family man who uplifts everyone around him, but both his haters and fans agree that Bert's current lifestyle is unsustainable, and he is in total denial of the obvious warning signs. I say it to my friends, I mean it to my friends, I say it to my wife, I mean it to my wife, and I mean it to alcohol. Like, I love alcohol, I love marijuana, I love cigars. Right. You don't like whiskey, you don't, you don't love it. You know who loves it? Me. Right. Who drinks it at fucking 8 a.m. on a plane. Yes. To go disappear. I love whiskey. Burt Kreischer's career started by accident due to a Rolling Stone article written about him in 1997. He was in his sixth year of college where he regularly skipped classes, drank until the sun came up, slept through the days, and never planned for the future. How many years have you been to college? Is that three or how many years is it in the US? Is it three or two? He was in college for six years. Please tell me it's not the same thing. In the UK, college is usually two to three years. It's four years in the US. So you did two more years than you meant to do. You do four years of college in the US. Is that true, Koyla? You do four years. Why did you double? Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting. When you say college, you guys mean university, innit? Fuck, my bad. When we say, because like, in school, we have like primary school, secondary school, college, university. So I guess you guys, college is uni. So uni is three to four. So, but most degrees are three years, right? Most degrees, most degrees are free. So he did, he did, he did a degree for six years. <laughs> Don't you get chucked out after a certain time? How's that even possible? I guess if you have the tuition fee, you can just pay it, right? If you have the money, you can pay. But it's fair to say, if he didn't make it as a stand-up comedian, Bert will be fucked, isn't it? That's clear indication of just. Like, he's a bit dumb. Six years. Fucking hell. He was known at his college as a party animal. Journalist Eric Hedgegaard from Rolling Stone wanted to do an article on Florida State, which recently got ranked as the top party school in the USA, as Eric was trying to find sources for 
Journalist Eric Hedgegaard from Rolling Stone wanted to do an article on Florida State, which recently got ranked as the top party. What's the other party schools there in the US? 2015, Syracuse, Iowa, West Virginia, Ohio, Georgia, Penn State, Florida. Oh, imagine what Florida po raves are like, mate. High school parties, college party. Imagine what a college fucking rave is like in fucking Florida. Oh, ho, ho, ho. West Virginia, Texas, Wisconsin, Alabama. Oh, shit, shit, bro. School in the USA. As Eric was trying to find sources for his story, five different people told him to link up with Bert. Eric spent one week shadowing Bert's life as a college student and realized the article was not going to be about the school. It was about Bert. Bert Kreischer, the undergraduate, released on April 17th, 1997, and told his story of bar hopping, playing frisbee, failing classes, and not thinking about tomorrow. Just reading a to be fair, I, this is a bit of a big deal, isn't it? It's, un it's understandable why Bert doesn't want to let go of this um, adult frat boy mentality thing he has. Imagine what this must have done to his clout back in the day. He got written up in a Rolling Stone magazine when it used to be a magazine, print only. He got an entire story written about how he was partying and shit back in the day. That must have He must have been a star in his fucking college. So it's no surprise that he doesn't want to let go of that persona because that must have been such a defining moment of his life, legit. Because you're a loser for a long time and then the Rolling Stones legitimizes you and kind of rehabilitates your image and makes you look like a star, right? I kind of get it. I kind of get why he's so delusional and doesn't want to grow up and stuff. Makes a lot of sense. A few sentences from this thing made Bert into some kind of urban legend. Sometimes when he walked in, people stopped and stared like he was Pablo Picasso or some other famous hole. Occasionally, he whipped out his sunglasses and slapped them over his eyes. The shades made him look sort of raffish, like a Skid Row Tom Cruise, but he wore them only so he could avoid having to say hello to the people whose names he couldn't remember. Bert was essentially being celebrated as an unproductive, passionless degenerate, a persona he would maintain for his entire career. This article was a perfect excuse to try to get into the energy entertainment industry. Bert decides that stand-up comedy is the route he wanted to take, and a talent agent scouted him during one of his routines at Potbelly's on his college campus. They relocated him to New York City, where he would perform at the Boston Comedy Club regularly. From there, an agent for Overbrook Entertainment, Will Smith's production company, scouted Bert and wanted to sign him to a six-figure development deal. Will loved Bert and took him under his wing. And then he was the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. He took me out to Hollywood, he introduced me to all the networks, he taught me how to sell a show, he was the greatest I saw. His Fucking hell, bro. Look at how he looks. Isn't it? He's digit like, that's what a lifetime of partying does to you, isn't it? He's fucking exploding. He looks like a fucking Savaloy. He looks like one of those fucking, you know those tomatoes they serve in Spanish restaurants, those really big ones. I think they call like beef tomatoes, right? Or something, right? The those ones that you can cut into a, a literal slice of steak and shit. Fucking hell. Again, there's probably trappings to his lifestyle. Probably does, you know, there's probably some good in it probably some fun times right you get paid to be like a degenerate a party boy a raver or whatever but god damn it health wise looks wise he looks like pure shit pure and utter shit Unfortunately, Bert's Hollywood career would be lackluster. He was able to land small acting and hosting roles, and Hurt Bert was the name of a four-episode series on FX featuring him performing dangerous stunts. The one thing he did stay consistent with is stand-up, five or six days per week, working on his craft in front of small crowds for years. He wasn't alone doing this. Almost all So he always, so he never was good at acting. He failed to be an actor from minute zero, from the jump. That's interesting, isn't it? He got given a complete layup, a silver, you know, hey, Will Smith introduced him. Look how much Chris D'Elia's aged, isn't it? This is ages ago, I know, but Chris D'Elia's face, that's what happens when you diddle kids, isn't it? He looks like an absolute scarecrow now. Look how different Chris looks. He looks yassified here, isn't it? Chris looks actually, Chris looks yassified. He looks like he's got that yassy feel to here. Fuck, bro.
all of the popular comedians today were right there alongside Burt in those clubs, hoping for a chance to impress an agent that would make them a movie star. After Burt released his 2009 comedy special, Comfortably Dumb, he secured his own reality show on the Travel Channel called Burt the Conqueror, which was again a show about him doing dangerous stunts. But despite this show being the biggest thing going for him, his comedy buddies Joe Rogan and Bill Burr sat down with Burt to tell him some harsh truths. They sat me down and told me, your Travel Channel show sucks. You're funnier than that. You need to do special you need to do podcasts. Burr remembers the conversation vividly. He was down in the dumps, trying to figure out what the next move was, and Joe Rogan and I were just starting podcasting. Joe Rogan had a hunch that podcasting would be the next big thing for comedians to gain a fan base. They could break away from the old method of hoping for a corporate network to put you on a sitcom so you can sell tickets to your stand-up performances. And he was right. A phenomenon now dubbed the Joe Rogan effect, or the Brogan effect, is essentially that any comedian who is friends with, or regularly featured on the Joe Rogan experience would become wildly successful comedians slash which is true but the fact is they don't want to admit it or not they Brendan's the only person that doesn't want to perp doesn't want to admit the Rogan effect and he's the largest proponent of it right imagine one of the highest individual this is the thing you have to imagine all the friends that he has Rogan Brendan's the only one that has the most individual appearances on the Rogan on the JRE experience sorry imagine that of all the comedy, of all the friends in comedy, Rogan has all the actual long relationships he's had with people in the trenches, going to clubs, getting past all this sort of stuff. All the people he's met along his career, Brennan, the newest member, the newest friend, is the one that has the highest amount of individual appearances. But he's also the one person that doesn't want to admit that Rogan's influence paid a had an out had had an oversized over oversized impact in his life in his career. Because without Rogan, really, yes, he probably would have a successful podcast. Would he be as big as he is now? Probably not. Podcasters. Brennan Schaub, Brian Callen, Joey Diaz, Tom Segura, Ari Shafir, Mark Norman are just a few of the many beneficiaries of the Brogan effect. Burt was a regular on Joe's podcast from the very beginning, and the JRE community treated him like their funny fat friend who has some of the most ridiculous stories. I had a dream one time that me and Elvis walked into his hotel room <laughs> and there were four dudes butt f***ing, right? And I, what? No, like his dad, no, he used to his pants in all the time 30s, in his 30s all the time he well, to, how long would you said the story began with you saying that he, he sh his pants recently. in a banana republic in beverly hills bird took joe's advice and started his own podcast called bird cat honestly man sometimes i wish i started my shit early back then because you could get away with so much shit in it i used to shit myself my friend did this my friend did that millionaire in 2013 and regularly had his comedian friends on as guests. The first 99 episodes were audio only, with the first video podcast he ever posted being episode 100 alongside Tom Segura. From here, he started taking his YouTube channel more seriously. Hey guys, it's- Yeah, exactly, Coyle, that's a really good point. The Will Smith thing made me feel for Bert. It's a bummer getting someone in that industry, then months later, they won't answer the phone call. Cool. That's the thing as well that I hate, I think about Hollywood. That's, that's why I probably I understand why these guys are so enamored with podcasting and suck each other's dick offs. Because most likely, the reason why Will Smith stopped answering Bert's calls was because the book, the, the jobs he was getting him, he wasn't securing them. He kept giving opportunities to do shows. They kept getting dropped or cancelled, or they didn't go through the they didn't go past the pilot. So it just turned into a thing where like Will decided or his team thought, okay, we bet on the wrong horse. But isn't that guy? And they dropped him. But they don't tell you. They're not honest. You know what I mean? That's the thing that I, that sounds the worst thing about the Hollywood industry, entertainment industry. You never know why you don't get jobs really, or why you get fired. The true point. You never really find out. You just move on. You know, um, they're not really honest and upfront with you. That's the one thing that kind of is a bit weird about that whole industry. But if you're clouded up and you got a lot of steam behind you, they will fucking give you shit on a silver platter, despite your la your your lacking of talent or your appropriateness for the job. You know, that's a weird thing. So you get things just because you're f you get things given to you just because of your fame that you probably don't deserve or that you're probably not good at. But then when you do things that you don't do them well, they don't tell you why you didn't do them well and they don't tell, give you a reason or explanation so you can improve yourself. It's just, nah, move on to the next one. This is Bert Kreischer. This is my YouTube page. Bert turned into a full-blown YouTuber, vlogging his family, his weight loss journey, and any random life adventures. He uploaded podcasts along some of the most promising upcoming talent in comedy, and of course, clips of his own stand-up. Bert admits that his stand-up act 
was very hacky for many years. He liked to riff with the audience and live in the moment. However, he wanted to challenge himself to write something, practice it, and put out a cohesive special that would act as a legacy piece. That special, titled The Machine, would go on to change his life. At the very end of 2016, Burt posted The Machine story that went extremely viral on Facebook, earning over 12 million views in one weekend. To this day, it has 40 million views. The same video quickly gained 4 million views on YouTube and brought him over 100,000 subscribers. Something about an overweight dude with no shirt talking about being kidnapped by the Russian Mafia was too good to not share with everyone you know. Burt's fame leveled up from the machine. He began booking larger venues due to higher ticket sales, doing as many as three shows per night for months straight. At this point, he received nothing but praise from the internet and comedy world, but he made a critical mistake early on. It's really hard to do a solo podcast just coming up with a couple subjects and ranting for an hour. Yeah. When I started my podcast, I was like, maybe I'll do it solo. He goes, do it solo. You don't need guests. Yeah. I was like, and Bert I did said this. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I did a couple solo. I go, Bill, they're not good. And he goes, they're not going to be. He was huh. like, let them be bad for like a year huh. and then they'll get better and then they'll get really good. And huh. then you won't even think about it. And then your writing on stage will be so strong. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm just going to have guests. Oh, this is a good insight into Bert's mentality. <laughs> Exactly. That is a perfect summation of Bert as a person. Oh, God Melody, Instead of using his podcast as a tool to practice jokes and material to make his actual job as a comedian better, he decided he would rather just waste a couple hours chit-chatting with his buddies while the money flows in. Exactly. But often, those conversations led to Bert being the butt of the joke, especially when he linked up with his best friend Tom Segura. Tom was exploding in fame due to his wildly successful Netflix special, Mostly Stories, which helped fans discover the Your Mom's House podcast. That special was really good, by the way. Mostly Stories was really fucking good. I know people don't like Bert now I mean Tom now I know he's a bit of a piece of shit now I know I get it but let's not lie most of stories was really good podcast on one episode Tom pulled up a picture of French actor Gerard Depardieu and jokingly said it looks like Bert then Tom's fan base started photoshopping Bert's face onto <laughs> pictures of Gerard and spreading the hashtag Bert is fat because it was all their best fans making hilarious jokes. One guy took the name Burnt Chrysler and made a <laughs> uh, his own fucking profile for it. By the way, I saw him yeah. in Hartford. He's he was, obese. Yeah. He's obese. Enormous. And, and he just sat in the front row the whole time going, Burt's fat, Burt's <laughs> fat. Next day, his mom shows up. Hey, buddy, your mom's morbidly obese. And the first word she says to me is, why are you so fat, Burt? And I'm like, oh my God, this is getting out of fucking control. Someone even made a song dedicated to the meme. But the interesting part about this is that Bert did not think he was overweight, and it was Tom and his fans that tricked him into thinking he was fat. Pull up a picture of me when you think I was fat, and I wasn't even that f***ing fat. No. Now I look at it and I go, I was legit skinny. And now, when I look at it... Burst illusion is fucking brilliant. I love, fucking love it. Now I look at it and I go, I can't believe I got mind tricked into being fat. There's some of these you didn't ones. Get mind tricked into being fat. But these seem like harmless jokes compared to when Ari Shafir genuinely disrespected Bert and put his life in danger. But before we talk about that, allow me to introduce you to Maggie. She's a mini schnauzer and she's a part of the CC family. Would you feed your family low quality? Come on, bro. Her old daughter's hands walked in his house to do a pod. Thank you. Or use code PatrickCC at checkout. I know your dog is a part of your family. So treat him like family. Thanks, Sundays. One night, Bert invited his friend and fellow comedian Ari Shafir over to his house. <laughs> the podcast that changed everything. The podcast that changed everything. House to do a podcast. Ari shook Bert's 13 and 15 year old daughter's hands, walked into the podcast room where they were going to share some drinks. Then Ari decided to secretly slip a capsule <laughs> of MDMA, aka Molly, into Bert's drink without him knowing. Molly gang. You don't think it's but the Molly's get the M's in the chat for the Molly gang. Get the M's in the chat for the Molly gang. Fucking crazy that you would do that. I bet. Did you, you like, even get the Molly tested? Like, where are you buying no, this Molly? No. I've done it for my favorite Molly dealer. <laughs> it's and great you just Molly. spiked it's his great. drink. Yeah. Yeah. High blood pressure, pressure, high cholesterol. It out three, guys, you're all talking I would want to kill you. Yeah, I would yeah. fucking want to kill he you. He wanted to for about 10 minutes. Okay. To, to be fair, I know it's, it was fucking crazy, but that's some real comedian shit. That's some real comedian shit. If you're actually a comedian and you're an actual psychopath, you actually live a bit of a delinquent, degenerate life, that should be standard, really. That should be quite funny. But these guys aren't really comedians, are they? They're just really... What someone said in a stream chat one time? Someone said something like, these stand-up guys are like... What is it? Someone said they're like, what are they? They're failed actors 
who got into podcasting or something like that. I was like, that's a really good way to describe them or something, right? They're not really stand ups. Like Joe's a good good example of it. He doesn't really like too much silliness on his pod. He doesn't really like to like get dumb and naughty, right? It's a bit proper. But if you're a real degenerate, if you're a real degenerate comedian, scumbaggy type of dude, spiking drinks should be like part of again, it sounds weird to say, spiking drinks should be a little bit funny to you. It really should. Practical jokes should always be funny. And you just keep pushing the line. I know it's wild to say, but you know, the way they the way Bert reacted to it, like a normie, a bit weird. Like, you're a comedian, aren't you? It's fun, isn't it? It's fun and games. We are planning on having a couple drinks with you and then having leave, getting you out of my house, having dinner with my children, relaxing, getting on a plane, and going on tour. Instead, <laughs> that's scrap. Joe laughs off the situation. Tom thinks Ari is a psychopath, and Bert was genuinely distraught about all of this. Any normal person understands. But you know what? You know what I think? You know what I think? Um, I think Josie made a good point here. Bert also said he told his girls how much he loved them and realized um, he still loved his wife. Horrible thing to do but it wasn't all bad exactly but you know what i think also josie more so than that i think to bert it was a reminder no it was a realization of how low in the pecking order he was to his friends and how little they regarded him you know because ari would have done that to tom he would have done that to joe he did it to bert because he knew he could get away with it and he knew bert's a bit of a pussy you know i mean i think that was what probably hurt bert more so than ever realizing that he was that guy in his group of friends because I think sometimes, maybe women are better. I think women are better. Yeah, I think w women might be a little bit better. Women are probably better within their friendship circle of knowing their place or knowing where they stand or knowing how they're viewed by other women in their group. Maybe guys are a little bit delusional. Maybe we don't really know where we stand within our social group and we think we're maybe higher than others. Maybe that's a problem. Maybe, maybe what Ari did was dangerous, but the comedy community had mixed feelings. I don't trust him. Because I because he spiked Burke. He gave his friend Molly that Nikki Glazer. Where's she been by the way? What's happened to her? Why do I feel like she kind of did the Nikki did they all kind of dis disown her when she made that really cringy song about that comedian that died? I feel like Nikki Glazer hasn't really been around lately. Or is she like doing her own thing? I feel like Nikki I haven't seen Nikki Glazer in ages on podcasts and shit. What's happened? It's not okay. It's not okay. But, but wait, that's hilarious, though. <laughs> Ari dosing Bert. You want to dive into this first? I think that Bert likes any hype that he can get. I think he's okay with it. In the exactly. End. My mistake was not getting his wife. That way, she got upset at me because she felt left out. I think. By the way, um, Bert's wife still doesn't like Ari to this day, right? And Bert's, Ari's not allowed back at the house anymore. And I don't think his kids like him either, it, right? That's that's the kind of law in it. Bert's, Bert's wife is still fuck Ari. And these kids hate him. And Bert's kids hate him. <laughs> I think that was the biggest issue. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm not going to toast him again. <laughs> Unless the opportunity arises. You say something. No, 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 I'm not going to toast him again. It would be fucking hilarious. Most people in Bert's situation would never talk to Ari again, especially after the blatant, unapologetic disrespect to his wife and family. But Bert made excuses for Ari's behavior. I'm going to give him Molly. We're going to get high. We're going to laugh. We're going to hang out all night. He didn't really calculate it. Like, he was like... Uh, I should have checked to see if his kids were in the other room. I should have checked to see if, if he had to make a, dinner or something. Uh, yeah. he, uh, my wife was making dinner for all, both of us with, to have dinner with the girls because my girls loved Ari. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and he's like, and and he didn't check that I was flying that night. I was starting my tour that night. So there's a lot of things Ari didn't like check the, the boxes for. This is even crazier. Uh, it's a prank, man. No one's checking all those details, man. Get over yourself. It's a fucking prank. Considering Ari has disrespected Bert's daughter Georgia before this whole situation, Ari had commented on Georgia's teeth. Georgia, <laughs> <laughs> Ari's a piece of shit as well. Ari, <laughs> teeth are great now, but when she was younger. She didn't have any enamel on her teeth, and they didn't look great. I posted a picture of me and her in Hawaii, and Ari was like, "Way to have 
ugly, no stupid fucking teeth. Oh. Bert's actions or lack of action prove that he will allow others to take advantage of him and disrespect him. Or you could just say Bert is a sweet guy who is trying to give his friend the benefit of the doubt. Either way, Bert just kept seeing more success. He released his third comedy special, Secret Time, on Netflix when the Netflix comedy boom was at its peak. He started another podcast alongside Tom Segura called Two Bears, One Cave that became an instant hit, especially for moments like this. You drinking Kool-Aid to start your day? Really? It's so good. You're drinking a 64 ounce this is one of the best and worst moments happens to this podcast because they kept chasing this moment ever since they've been chasing this one moment ever since it happened so annoying so much sugar good for that guy he drinks a lot of water it's cool oh oh His laugh is almost identical to nails on a chalkboard. Bert's high-pitched hyena laugh is divisive amongst fans. Many have pointed out that his laugh is not just annoying, but borderline torturous. <laughs> <laughs> Others suspect that Bert's laugh is fake, and this theory would almost be proven true based on what Bert said to Joe Rogan. My viral clips are me laughing at and people falling down. Mine are legit just me laughing. Yeah. Just if if I can get if I can laugh, it goes it goes viral. If Bert understands that the only way he goes viral is because of him obnoxiously mm. laughing, then it's safe to assume that he might do it up a little bit. I mean, it was definitely working in his favor. In 2019, he was selling out one to two thousand capacity theaters twice per week. As 2020 rolled around, he started selling three thousand to five thousand tickets per show. But then the pandemic hit, which was one of the best and worst things to happen to Bert's career. No comedy clubs were open, all tours were cancelled, but more people were spending time inside, which meant they had more time to consume long form content. Bert and the entire. Co I wonder, I wonder if this is what boosted and killed the comedy podcast or the podcast bubble. Maybe this exhaust, maybe this quick, maybe this um, hastened the implosion of the comedy bubble or the podcast bubble. People were in more, they s listened to more pods, but then as soon as they were outside again, they all dropped them. Huh comedy podcast community saw massive spikes in their viewership, and they were all working together to try and entertain this new audience. They set up these terrible Zoom comedy shows that were destined for failure, but one ended in disaster for Bert. Ladies and gentlemen, this next comedian is one of my comedic heroes. He is the reason I do stand-up. He is the reason I've been writing movies that have never been made, but I love his movies. I love everything about this guy. Okay. Without further ado, the guy that defined all our personalities, Adam. Sandler. Considering Adam is Bert's idol, you would think he would try to have his best first impression possible. Sandler was initially thrown off by Bert's fanboy energy, but kept it smooth. Then it got worse. Uh, we're gonna watch uh, your movie, Precious Gems, soon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be, I don't know if they're gonna like it. I showed them, I showed them Happy Madison. And then- oh, The movie's really good. You have Netflix? Yes, yes. Check out Hey Big Boy, streaming right now. It's my new- <laughs> That was painful at the time, and it's more painful now. Oh my god, Bert, man. You have Netflix, Adam Sandler. Our special. Oh yeah, alright, I'll check it out, I'll check it out. I'll check it out late tonight, buddy. While claiming to be a huge fan, Bert drunkenly mispronounced two of Adam's movies, Uncut Gems, as Precious Gems, and combined Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison to Happy Madison. Then he shamelessly promoted his comedy special. It was pretty clear Sandler started getting fed up with him. If you, I had a question I, was, I wanted to ask. If you could go back to one movie that was the funnest to shoot, doesn't matter what movie, just go back and have that be your set every day for the rest of your life, your Groundhog's Day, like we're all living. What movie was... I didn't even realize at that point of a question. Groundhog's Day like we're all living. Maybe that's Bert's problem. Maybe Bert sees his life as Groundhog Day. Maybe he actually thinks he's reliving his glory years in college again and again and again in adult years. That's probably his whole problem. Wow. Groundhog Day like we're all living. That is so sad, bro. He's literally holding on to that college identity till now. Was the funnest to shoot that you would shoot every single day for the rest of your life? 
Go ahead. No, no, no answer for that. I got no idea. I never thought about that. And I never will. And I, and I hated that question. What else? The crazy part is, he actually look on. He actually looks annoyed. I forgot how annoyed he actually looked. I've never seen Adam Sandler look that way. He actually looked annoyed, like actually pissed off. Like what? Bert thought he impressed Adam. And Theo, I thought it went well. Oh. I was like, nailed it. That's left, alcoholism. Left man. Whitney's going. Ka-ching, you need the closer. Bring in the closer. <laughs> yeah. You, Adam Sandler's probably going. Who the f is this Bert Kreischer guy? Sign him to a deal. <laughs> Covert, get Kreischer on the line. This guy's hot. We need him. Since Bert claims to love Sandler so much, he probably just assumed Adam would respect and love him back since they were on the same Zoom comedy show. But while trying to get Sandler's approval, he just embarrassed himself badly. Bert's inability to read the room or understand that he can't always be the main character would be a reoccurring issue in the future. He became the laughing stock of the comedy community, but it did not slow him down for one second. He put together the Hot Summer Nights comedy tour, which allowed fans to see him live just like they would a drive-in movie, with the show projected on a massive film screen and the audio playing through their car stereos. Or understand that he can't always be the main character would be a reoccurring issue. Oh, why did that for? Sure. He became the laughing stock of the comedy community, that. but it did not slow him down for one second. He put together the Hot Summer Nights comedy tour, which allowed fans to see him live just like they would a drive in movie, with the show projected on a massive film screen and the audio playing through their car stereo. One thing I'll never understand is how, when COVID was on, at the peak of COVID, these comedians were doing everything in their power to do these shows. And I was thinking to myself, like, is your comedy that good that people need to go to this length to go and see it? What are you really saying of any value that should require this amount of like work to make happen? Like, like as, as a, as a, as a hustle, as a way to get your content out there and to keep performing it, to keep the lights on, to pay your bills. Fair enough. But there's a part of me that also felt like, I don't know, maybe taking a break from your stand-up for a couple of years is a good thing, you know? Do we really need to go and sit in our cars and watch you on a projector and shit? Like, you don't really, you know what I mean? We're not really missing out on much. I don't know. These performances are awkward since the comedian can't really hear the laughter, but a lot of comedians used Bert's- Exactly, Coyla. Just stay home and eat take out the rest of it. I, I don't know. I don't know format to save themselves from going bankrupt during the pandemic. He also secured another Netflix original, this time a reality TV show called The Cabin with Burt Kreischer. Wow, bro. Burt's done a lot, in it? He's actually achieved a lot. Unironically, he's achieved quite a bunch. I forgot all about this stuff. That cabin show, I forgot all about that. He must have made a lot of money in the last five years, isn't it? Like, he must have made more money in the last five years than he probably made in his whole career. Maybe. Fucking hell. Sure. The show's premise is that Bert's life is moving 1,000 miles per hour and he needs isolation for healing and detoxing. He invites celebrity guests to a cabin in the woods to partake in various self-improvement activities that none of them really take seriously. There were plenty of hilarious moments, but every episode features a serious segment where Bert talks about his problems to his guests. This show could be perceived as Bert giving more visibility to various comedians. Others just look at it as a way for Bert to be the center of attention, projecting his problems onto other important people. The 2021 slash 2022 Birdie Boy tour was ranked number four in the top 10 highest grossing tours of the year, wow. achieving a gross revenue of 23,581,000. Yo. Fucking hell. That's incredible, bro. That's incredible, to be fair. Considering Bert's stand-up content and what it's like and hearing his jokes... He made 23 million and did 148 shows. Wow. Again, that's proof that he actually has real fans, or to be fair. Burst one person you can never say is bought in views and shit. You can tell he has a fan base. It might not be for you. It might not be for me. But he definitely has legit fans, like way more fans than haters. Burst definitely a good example of it. And the proof is in the fucking pudding, right? Look at those numbers. He definitely has a lot of fans. Even during the pandemic, all those tours you're doing, those car show tours, they were selling really well. Do you know what I mean? People would come out to go see him, you know, at a drive-thru and shit. So clearly people love what he does. 
but I just can't get it because you know I think the comedy is pretty subpar. But fair play to him. Fair play to him. Thousand dollars selling three hundred sixty nine thousand tickets over the course of one hundred forty eight. Exactly, Space Kai. You don't sell out arenas without fans. Exactly. Exactly. That's one thing you can't fake: arena sellouts. Shows. On top of this, he was vlogging, doing the Two Bears One Cave podcast weekly, uploading his own Burtcast weekly, as well as featuring on any other comedian's pod who would have him. He turned his iconic machine story into a full-blown feature film. It was a critical failure, but his fans loved it. The film secured $10 million at the box office, but the $20 million budget made this film kind of a flop. Mm. Regardless, Burt was one of the most successful comics in the world, but this lifestyle was destroying him. He always had been a heavier guy. Around 220 pounds was a comfortable weight for him. During his tour, he reached over 260 pounds, which he clearly- Big up Crash, appreciate it, brother. Triumphs and traumas, you relive them both the same. 100% man, 100%. I guess, I usually have this way of like, I guess the only way you can re- How do you, how do you avoid that? New goals? Maybe? Or maybe there is this is this is whippy to say. Let's say this. Let me say this. Maybe here's what you do. Maybe the way to like make sure you're not caught in that infinite loop is that you spend is that you have periods in your life where you're trying to relive your triumphs, right? Or you're trying to relive your best years, whatever it may be. But then there's a specific time in your life where you turn that switch off. And you dedicate yourself to your family, to your relationship, to service of others. But there's a time where you switch it off. Maybe that's the key. And maybe that's the sad part of it when you see people that don't have that ability to switch it off. It's like uh, Brendan Schulz's wife in a, way, in a weird way, right? Weird example, but maybe her. Like you see yourself as a hot girl, so you can never turn off that part of your brain. Or you can never just be the mum now and be happy to be a mum you always have to kind of have that hot girl image out there also. So you can never let go of that image, which kind of makes you look a bit sad because it's sort of like you can never kind of grow up and you're mentally stuck at a certain point. Does that make sense? Maybe, I don't know. But also, to be fair to Bert, to be a successful stand-up comedian, I think part of it, you kind of have to be, especially these type of dudes, these podcast type of guys, you kind of have to be caught in a constant state of retardation if that makes sense you kind of have to be peter pan a little bit you kind of can't grow up you know it's like you have to be in a state of arrested development i think to be a those because those type of sign up comedians have podcasts you're talking about dicks all the time you're talking about all this like stupid humor that usually you kind of grow up you grow out of but i think you have to keep that bit of you if you want to be a successful podcast comedian kind of type of that guy because maybe people are listening to Bert for that release. They wish they could be Bert. They wish they could get away with being the lad that drinks beers and hangs out and all that shit, right? They kind of want that lifestyle, but they can't have it. So I don't know. Maybe I'm psychoanalyzing it too much. Maybe it's not that deep. Who knows? But big up Crash. Appreciate you. Really was not happy with. His face was puffy, his skin was bright red, and he just looked uncomfortable. But Bert has always struggled understanding his health. So when, that, when I did Secret Time, I didn't realize that it already happened until they did the billboard of it. And they did the billboard and I go, that's not my stomach. My stomach's tight. And it was a, it was complete. Bert then goes on to say that he thought producers photoshopped a different man's stomach onto his body. They didn't. He is also steadfast in convincing everyone he is actually in great shape. That's body dysmorphia for real, isn't it? That's real body dysmorphia. Again, he could be playing into it, but that is really body dysmorphia. I get I get not realizing how fat you are, but thinking your belly has been photoshopped is fucking insane. This is like when you go like, I have legit the best shoulders. I do. <laughs> Hold on, I do. Yeah, I, I have it. legit great shoulders. Like great fucking shoulders. I am fucking jacked. You're, I am low key jacked. You're Dude, low key. Feel my fucking arm. Just feel my arm. Just feel my arm. Now everyone should feel comfortable in their own skin, but it seems like Bert says these things hoping for confirmation bias. He wants yes men around him. 
His friends are not trying to shame him. It's more likely they want him to hold himself accountable so that things don't get out of control. Because his weight and high blood pressure could be a direct result of his excessive alcohol consumption. Early morning beer buzz is no, like no. one of my favorite things in the world. No, don't understand not at all. And they're like, hey, come on in and get a drink. And I was like, no. I was like, God damn it, man. If this was any other day, I'd be like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I just double Tito's on a big last no line. Can I get a second one? I'm just going to murder this one real quick. This guy, I mean, it's wild that he's alive. <laughs> Bert claims that he has this Mickey Mantle gene, which allows him to drink. I don't think it's wild that he's still alive. I think it makes perfect sense. If you actually drink like the rest of us, regular civilians out there, you drink it to kind of soothe your pain. You drink it to black out so you don't remember days so that, you know, you can get over whatever trauma you're going through to comfort yourself from the, you know, the hopelessness of your life and the inability for you to kind of reach your goals and your dreams and shit. That's when drinking destroys you. But I think if you have everything given to you and you have a pretty comfortable life and you drink the way Bert does, you can live quite long because you're not drinking the same way that regular people drink, you know? You're just drinking for quote-unquote fun and pleasure, really. It's a bit different. I think when you're drinking and you're just a, a regular working-class guy trying to earn a wage, trying to keep a roof over your head, trying to keep your kids fed, trying to support your partner, the drinking takes a bit of a sinister and a darker turn because it's literally your only one comfort. But if you're drinking like him as a part of your personality, to have fun like you know it's different that's probably why he's still alive because i bet you a big part of people's you know death and whatever when it comes to addiction and drugs is usually because the other side of their lives like outside of the drinking is also fucked up and i'm sure this again this is all woo woo shit but i'm sure there's some sort of emotional imbalance plus the that can really fuck you over and then you tap out i'm sure that is part of it again i'm i'm, I'm speaking out my ass here i don't know what i'm talking about but i'm sure that's an element to it if you're somebody that has a dad that works a good job, a mom that's working well, you've grown up in a sort of middle class family and you're drinking the way that he does and you you can afford to be in college for six years, for goodness sake. Oh yeah, big up Uche. Well, go on. Big up Uche. What's good? What's good? What's good? I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm in the wrong year. Who knows? Drink all night and work all day with no sleep. Party all night, get up the next morning and put in work <laughs> and perform like a... I said, no, nah, fuck Jake Paul. I'm not doing that again. After Jake Paul and Dylan Dennis, I refuse to watch any Paul Brothers fights. I refuse. No more Paul Brother fights. No more Paul Brother fights. After Jake Paul and fucking Dylan Dennis, I'm oh, sorry, Logan Paul and Dylan Dennis, that absolute shit show, I'm never watching a Paul fight again. I don't give a fuck. Especially Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. Fuck off. Never again. They're not getting me again. They're not scamming me. They got me last time. They got me good. I'm going to hold my hands up. They got me good. They got me well and good. They sold me a fucking, they sold me a fight. They sold me a blockbuster event. I got sold the whole dream. I watched it never again because I think it made me angry. It's not their fault either. It's not their fault. They've got a business. They're hustlers. They're fucking good businessmen. They know what they're doing. It's not the Paul brother's fault. But I refuse to put myself through that again. I refuse. I refuse. More power to you if you want to watch it. Apologies that I'm not covering it. But I refused because I remember how angry I was. Some of you were on stream and I watched it. I remember how angry I was watching that fucking Dylan Dennis. Yeah. Never again. Never again. Even Dylan. No more fights for Dylan either. You know, you don't get my time. Never. Champion on fumes. But then, I'm telling you, man, it's John Daly's got it. Yeah. Babe Ruth had it. Right. It's just those people. I mean, to be fair. I didn't even know he was fighting today. I swear to God, until you guys mentioned in the chat, I had no idea Jake Paul was even fighting. So I don't think I'm the only one who doesn't, you know, who, who stopped tuning in. I think in general, the coverage has kind of slowed down on those kind of guys because there's only so many times you can scan people with those type of fights, you know? You have to deliver at one point, so whatever. Hopefully he wins or whatever, but yeah. That's it. He compares his lifestyle to Mickey Mantle and Babe Ruth, two successful athletes that were also functioning alcoholics who died 30 years too soon. If there is a single clip on the internet that represents Bert, it's this one. Ooh, what do you think about that? It says here, Mickey Mantle, age of death, 63 years. Babe Ruth died, 53 years old. Do we think Bert outlives both of these guys? 
he's in his fifties now, isn't it? Right, Bert's about fifty-one now, right? Do you think he outlives Babe Ruth and Mickey Mantle? Babe Ruth died when he was fifty-three. Mickey Mantle died when he was sixty-three. My theory is this: I think Bert outlives most of his comedic peers. So it wouldn't, again, this is bad to say aloud, but it wouldn't be surprised me if Tom died before Bert. I just know so many people like Bert, in my family even, or people that I've known actually, I mean, who just don't do anything to look after themselves, but they somehow get away with it. So I've got a feeling Bert outlived everybody, weirdly enough. Even, even a Rogan, right? He'll outlive all these guys that are doing fucking IVs and they're doing TRT and all this sort of stuff. He outlives all of these guys, I bet you. It's too soon. If there is a single clip on the internet that represents Bert, it's this one. I will never quit drinking. Who's that guy? He's I cool. will never quit drinking. I will always make sure that I can keep my body healthy enough so that I can always drink. At a brunch, someone goes, should we do mimosas? And then the waiter goes, actually we have bottomless mimosas. And you're like, this is going to be the best day ever. Sitting. Isn't this like, if you replace booze with anything else and you said that, that'd be crazy, isn't it? Imagine if you said to somebody, I'm never going to stop doing coke. I'm never going to stop doing MDMA. I'm never going to stop doing Xanax. I'm never going to stop doing heroin. I'm never going to stop doing MDMA. Imagine you replace booze with those drugs. And I'm going to keep my body in a place where I could do all those drugs for as long as possible. Can you imagine? And booze is the most destructive, really, isn't it? Because it's the most easily accessible, too. Fuck. Being on the Joe Rogan podcast, drinking while his friends watch a video of him talking about how much he loves alcohol, while reciting the video under his breath. His overwhelming success, combined with him lacking awareness, was reaching a tipping point, and things were starting to get dark. Best alone drinking you can ever do, in my opinion, now we're getting into the weeds on it, mm -hmm. is alone behind someone's back. Like Christmas shopping. And your wife says... <laughs> All right, let's all split up and you go yeah. cool and it's like it's like 11 o'clock on a sunday and they just opened that bar by the elevator in the beverly center and you just sneak over and you go hey man can i get a double jack on the ross ox rots and they're like sure and you just have it and you just go let's just and then you're yeah. off and then you're like yeah. yeah and then you just little sneak one sneak yeah. it i mean i look at like men i am so far from a man <laughs> i am so far Far from a man, you know, like there's a, some self actualization. What is happening, that's been happening today? Like I'm so far from like a man who goes, yeah, everyone else first, then me. It's not how I think. I go me, and then oh, there are other people here. Talk to your therapist about any of this. Like, will you bring this up? You know, uh, no. This is the stuff to talk about. No, this isn't. This isn't therapy stuff. Yes, it is. When you talk about men versus me. It's clear as day that Bert is suffering. His friends would try to help him, but you cannot help someone who doesn't think they have a problem. You think that you're an alcoholic? No, I've been, I've, I've run it through the ringer a few times. Dr. Drew's my litmus. Oh yeah. And I've, I've talked to him about it. He's like, you're not an alcoholic. You just drink too much. He's like, Al alcoholism is <laughs> Dr. Drew is a fucking grift as well, isn't it, right? You're not an alcoholic, you just drink too much. <laughs> Different. Being powerless to alcohol is different than drinking a lot. Yeah. And I, th I think same with, like, I mean, a guy like Ron White, I think he was a big drinker. I don't think he was an alcoholic because he just quit. One doctor told Bert he's not an alcoholic and he uses that as his justification. He says he can quit drinking whenever he wants. He says he's not powerless to alcohol. He wants to be just healthy enough so that he can keep drinking. And to all of our surprises, he actually did quit. I was going sober for, for 23 days. Oh, yeah, that's not right. five days. That I don't believe that in the slightest, to be fair. Anytime Bert says he's going sober, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And the proof is in the pudding. He still looks like shit, so I don't believe it. And after three weeks, he said this. On keto, day 21, no booze, no sugar, no carbs. And I feel fantastic. Or the fact that I have no booze to cloud it but I feel phenomenal if you think more energy thinking clearly not feeling hungry sleeping better he says his blood pressure dropped to the point where he didn't have to take his medication anymore Bert was shocked at how good his life could be I'm down 40 pounds I haven't had alcohol or sugar in 83 days I've been primarily carnivore that all ends today 
Bird's celebration for his sobriety was by getting absolutely hammered on the Fully Loaded Cruise, which was a multi-day long private cruise slash comedy show that he spent one year planning. Bird's goal for getting sober was to prove to himself that he wasn't dependent on it. Now today he is going on podcast after podcast talking about how transformed he is. You don't realize how deep you are in like obesity and drinking and keeping how deep you are in the hole right until you get your head a little bit out of it and then yeah. you start feeling better and like little things are feeling a lot better for me i'm not an alcoholic <laughs> <laughs> this guy people have asked me that so guy. often and i go no and they're like really i think that you've told me directly that you think you have a problem no i have a problem with everything with food with sex like yeah. I, I i everything i have a problem with everything that's just my personality there's two types of people you have an you have an addicted personality with everything else except for booze. There's addicts and there's partiers. Partiers stop when the when the party's over. Yeah, and then addicts just never stop. That's true. And I was like, oh yeah, I, I stop when the party's over. I love that every few months Bert gets healthier and it's a big thing, and then it's right back off the rails. This is a sad reality for many people watching. You likely have a friend or loved one who is struggling with some sort of addiction. You can see it, but they can't, or they ignore it. You just want the best for them, but if they don't want it for themselves, then there really isn't anything you can do. You can't force them or shame them. None of it will work. And if they continue to spiral, you'll still feel guilty. You'll think that you could have done more to help. Bert brags about his Mickey Mantle gene, but Mickey Mantle died at age 63. That would mean Bert has roughly 10 years left to live. Wow, sobering, 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 sobering. Now, will he listen to any of that? Probably not. Um, and does it matter? Probably not either. I don't know. I'm just somebody that doesn't, I don't know, I guess I save my empathy and my sympathy for people who somewhat deserve it. If he willingly chooses to live this sort of life, whatever happens, happens in it, to be honest. If you willingly decide to live this sort of lifestyle when you've been given every advantage under the sun, right, then it kind of is on you, isn't it? Why should we be sad about how you live your life if you willingly decide to do what you're doing? That's my opinion. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am. But yeah, big up Patrick CC. Brilliant fucking video. Loved it. Absolutely enjoyed it. Check out his channel. I'm sure most of you are aware of him anyway. He's got 1.6 million subscribers anyway, man. I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm just I'm just late finding out about him. But I'm sure most of you know who he is already. But yeah, big up Patrick CC. Big up Patrick CC.